What's up everybody, James Duggan here with IGN, taking a look at Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, which is a Battle Royale-esque game in the style of H1Z1 King of the Kill, kind of daisy esque things like that. I'm here in a C-130 with 99, actually 93 other players, and at any point I can jump out, which is something that's unique about this amongst many other things, so I can kind of predetermine where I'm going to land on the map. Uh, in this instance, I choose to go for a not very populated area, and if you're playing with two friends or three other friends, which is something you can do with the duo and squad-based modes in the game, you can all jump out together and start right away, uh, which is a nice change of pace from something like Daisy. So I pulled the cord here. I've actually edited this video down from about 30 minutes to 15. It's a decently successful run, as you may have gathered from the title, and I'm going to walk you through what happens as well as talk about the game in general. This is the uh, second building that I went into, and immediately I find a 12 gauge shotgun, which is okay. Uh, assault rifle would be better in this instance as your first weapon to find, but the shotgun can do a ton of damage up close. Now, what's interesting about this game is just about every house has a gun in it. The idea is to get you in the game, get you geared, get you guns, and get you killing other players as soon as possible um, and get you to start experiencing that emergent kind of gameplay that is so synonymous with this. Now I can hear a player moving around in this house if you hear that and actually I peek in the window and see him there. Uh, this game is all about stealth, when to break stealth, when to attack so I decide to kind of play cat and mouse with this guy and I see him right there and I'm going to get the drop on him here. Not sure if he knows I'm coming. He does now! There's one shot, there's two shots and he's dead. And that feels good. Um, I'm going to break this down. He does a quick 180. A nice reaction shot on his part, but unfortunately he just didn't see me in the window. And that particular player had his mic open so I could hear his keyboard uh, and a nice heavy sigh on his part after I zing a cool one-liner at him, which you can't hear, thankfully, but uh, he did. So I move in here. I actually forget to loot him like a dummy, but I am able to pick up a couple other things. Uh, I get some bullet loops for my shotgun. I saw he had a 12 gauge, so I'm probably not missing much in retrospect. Um, but that happened pretty early. You can see here that I have a bunch of clothes on already. I have like this cool leather jacket, these goggles, uh, this bandana, and that's because there is an out-of-game progression in terms of items like H1Z1, where things that are aesthetically driven, that don't affect your character stats, can be customized and you can take straight into the match with you. So I already kind of have a, an aesthetic, which is nice here. Uh, I'm able to pick up a, an M16A4 here. I kit it out a little bit. Um, and going back to talk about the game a bit more, matches last anywhere from 5 to 30 minutes, and I think that's a really nice balance. It's almost, if you take a, a long campaign uh, in World of Warcraft and condense it down to Dota, it's almost, I feel, analogous to DayZ being condensed down uh, to this. Instead of taking four hours to get geared up and having to run across the map and spawn wherever, um, you're able to get geared up immediately and kind of start experiencing that gameplay synonymous with the genre. So this is the map. Uh, there is a white circle, there is a blue circle, and a red circle. The white circle indicates where the blue circle, which is the electricity shield, is going to shrink to. So that, of course, uh, something we've seen in the genre before, forcing players to a smaller and smaller zone. The red circle is this interesting bombing run. Now I come up on these houses here, uh, and I'd love to point out, like, the open windows. It's really difficult to see in there. There's actually no glass there. Um, some very cool building design and a pretty well-varied map. Not a lot of reused assets in terms of buildings. I give myself a little bit of a jump looking in that mirror. Um, you can do things like switch to combat pants. There are aesthetics that you can pick up in the game that don't transition out of the game. Instead, the kills you get uh, give you points, which you use to unlock crates, which give you items. Now, another thing I'd love to point out is like you saw my aim down sights there. You can go into first person, aim down sights, and look down your, your optic, but you could see my gun went down there. Um, and that's great because that means my gun is not going to poke through walls. So, <laughs> obviously the people who developed this have played the genre uh, and are familiar with it and know what makes uh, a good iteration of it. I'm coming up on this city, and anytime you come up on a city that you've seen a lot of players jump down to, you know, number one, it's probably going to be looted, uh, but number two, there are probably still going to be players there, so I'm very much on edge at this point. Um, but it turns out to be a ghost town, as we'll see here in a bit. Uh, again, I have cut this match down, so we are going to get straight into the action, and it does start getting a little bit more exciting towards the end of it. Um, you can kind of go into this advanced third-person aiming by holding down right-click, and at that point you can switch camera angles between left and right shoulder, which is nice for looking around corners. You, you can also go into first-person and then ADS, um, and switching weapons and everything like that feels very fluid. Right now, doors and cars are a little bit slow uh, on the interaction, but other than that, it's very well polished uh, for early access, and they have thought of a lot here. There's a little red dot indicating that I can't aim past that. So I'm able to get a motorcycle helmet from that, um, and not much else. 
maybe a couple of attachments. But there is a player in the distance. That was a zoom on my part uh, in video editing. That was not something that you can do in the game unless you have a scope. Uh, and I'm going to choose to chase and engage. And this is kind of the way that I play when I'm playing by myself. I very much do not like to make my presence known until I have a, a viable shot that I can take. Um, and you'll see me engage here even what I would quantify as uh, a slightly uncomfortable distance. Um, but we'll see how this turns out for me. Um, and this, at this point, the blood starts pumping a little bit faster, and this genre is able to give you this kind of visceral rush. Uh, here we go, he stopped and is aiming, so now's the time. I'm gonna switch to single fire mode, which is something you can do one shot, two shots, hit the third shot, hit the fourth shot, and, uh, four shots to bring him down. And that felt very good on my part, uh, keeping my composure and not freaking out, which, man, I've done plenty of time <laughs> in this game. So I'm gonna work my way around this and try and loot his body this time and, and, and not miss the loot. Uh, but I'm going to go prone here. I have been shot a lot uh, when I'm looting other players' corpses. And killing other players, just like any other game in this genre, is a quick way to double your investment. He's got a car 98. I'm going to take that, which is a cool bolt-action sniper rifle. Not the best in the game, but also very good. And I'll put that to good use later. Uh, you do have to juggle ammo types, but it's not too bad. It's just 5.56, 7.62, so that's AK or M16. Uh, the car takes 7.62, so I need to have both. There are weight uh, limitations. I have a backpack. If I found a bigger backpack, I could hold more stuff. There's stuff like a police vest, which I put on, which gives me bullet resistance. But since I damaged him, you can see it's already taken a bit of damage. Uh, take painkillers and energy drinks there, which are important because those are what allow you to heal up past 75 HP. Uh, and I'm not sure why I just chugged one, but there there you go. All right, so I have to make it my way to that smaller white zone. The, the playable area is ever shrinking, as is often the case. Um, I could get in a vehicle, and we're actually going to see vehicles come into play in just a second here. Um, but things are going to start to get a little bit more intense, fast forwarding a bit. And I hear gunfire over here. At this point, I do want to kind of push the advantage. I have kitted myself out decently well. Obviously, other people are going to have guns, but I'm looking to get in an engagement for the ex excitement factor in addition to the points that I'll be getting uh, and also bringing down the player count to hopefully add myself closer to victory. There's the electricity wall. Now, this guy turns around and actually sees me, and we exchange a volley of gunfire, and man, I barely come out of that with my life, so instead of looting him, I just go lay down over here uh, and use a first aid kit to heal up. Uh, actually, a couple bandages. Going to fast forward here. Um, I have a minute and 26 to play with until this wall of electricity in front of me closes in. Uh, so I'm going to go loot this player's corpse. Uh, a plane is flying overhead. They drop supplies uh, that are often like an M249 or uh, uh, some cool sniper rifle. Very powerful weapons, but of course, that is telegraphing. Everybody is going to be around there, so... Um, a little bit dangerous to go engage those. I hear a car come up over here, and again, vehicles are something you can do and get multiple players in the same vehicle. Uh, they have gas. You don't need to assemble parts like you do in other games, but anytime there's a vehicle, there's a player. So there's the vehicle. Now I'm going to look for the player and uh, hope he doesn't see me, and he doesn't. So we're going to take our time here and again, shoot when we have a nice shot uh, with not a lot of cover for him to run to. This looks like a really good angle, and I'm going to take it. There's the fourth kill. Uh, and I'm going to go back and loot this player's corpse because I saw he still had some stuff that I wasn't able to pick up in that time, like the first aid kit, maybe some more ammo. But I only have 20 seconds here, so I really have to <laughs> use it sparingly. Um, but I'm not too concerned because, again, this vehicle is right next to me. Um, and the electricity shield is not going to instantly kill me. That's a very important distinction. It's going to deal damage over time, and I will be able to survive it. Um, I make two bad calls here and swap two helmets for ones that are more damaged, but uh, frankly, I'm more concerned with other things and not really focused on that and just thought, saw that they were upgrades level-wise. Um, and speaking of upgrades, there is a l level 1 backpack, level 2 backpack, level 3 backpack, and basically everything armor-related follows suit. So uh, level 3 armor would have more HP, and the car kind of stalls! Oh no, what's going to happen? I start taking radiation damage, uh, which is not great. But hey, that's okay. Um, I come away from that. I've been in much worse scenarios with the out-of-bounds area. Now, I, at this point, with 23 players alive in the area ever shrinking, really want to ditch this car and don't want to make too much of a fuss as I engage, engage the turbo on that car, doing the exact opposite of what I said. Uh, so I'm going to look for a nice place to kind of just ditch this vehicle. Not something I want to cruise around in and telegraph my location too much. Um... There are a lot of things that this game has thought of uh, that I think just demonstrate the mastery of the genre. Um, and a lot of the things that were synonymous with the genre, like having to find all these parts to put together a vehicle, 
having to find the right ammo type, scavenging 20 houses before you find a weapon, um, are really solved for. I hear a car, by the way. And I like that. I like getting right into the action in this game, and I like how it keeps the pace moving. It's a very play of finds a nice mix between playability and realism, um, and frankly, it's a much less buggy engine uh, than Arma, if I'm able to make that comparison. Okay, so there is a player over there for sure. I'm going to work my way towards him, and this is the first house that I come across that has an open door. So assuming someone hadn't looted it before, the player that I just saw is probably in this house. Now, uh, a minute 30 until the area starts closing, so I'm just going to wait it out, and hopefully that player will make a move before I do those kind of uh, pulses, if you will, of action when you need to escape the electric shield, really get people going. And there he is! And I take a couple shots on burst fire, bring him down. I'm actually not even going to bother looting him because there are nine people left. I am okay with my kit. I do not need anything too fancy here. I think uh, smart decisions are going to be more helpful than something like a Scar L. Uh, an automatic fire. There's a kit that I miss on the left there. Uh, and I come in here looking for maybe a player, maybe a, an exit, find neither, and decide to double back around. Um, and frankly, if I can be totally honest, I'm very nervous at this point. Uh, this is probably my third or fourth match, and I have not gotten this far. So, I'm... Uh, all my senses are tuned up to 11. And again, something that this game can give you that th I just feel a lot of other FPSs don't. Uh, because there is this time investment on the line. Uh, that's a bush. But that's a player. Going to take my time and get a nice headshot there. Um, the Car 98 able to one-shot even with the helmet there. But uh, I have seen instances where you shoot somebody in the head, it just destroys their helmet. I fat finger the Windows key. That's a pro move. <laughs> I'm proning up here. You can see the, the area in which is playable is very small, but a player is uh, ill-advised, full sprinting across it. I lead my target. There is bullet travel time. There is bullet drop. I have to take all that into consideration, but I'm still able to land three solid shots and get my seventh kill. Uh, so there are five left alive in this small zone, and at this point, I have a decently good chance of taking this thing home, but all of that can change in a heartbeat. And from this point on, I do not cut the video. Um, it may seem a little bit boring, but I assure you my heart was going a million beats a minute uh, in, this, in this game mode. So this is something that you can check out on Steam Early Access. It's called Player Unknown Battlegrounds. Player Unknowns Battlegrounds, plural. Quite a name. Um, now I need to move in even further. You can see the area gets so incredibly small. It's like the size of a soccer field at this point. And I need to figure out when to take my move. There are four people left in this area, and I see absolutely none of them. There could be people behind the electricity wall, but at this point, the damage from the electricity wall is so high, that's pretty unlikely. Uh... And at some point, I'm going to make my move over to that tree, which I hope is in the white area, which is the safe space. Um, but again, very nervous to make a run based on what just happened to that guy. Decide to go for it, and nobody has spotted me. So this is part luck. This is part skill. I'm not trying to recite a Fort Myers song, I promise. Uh, <laughs> but it definitely is part luck. You can be a very skilled player and get flanked. It happens. Uh, taking my time here, proning, just checking things out. This is not a time to rush. Very much my strategy has changed from hyper-aggressive to passive, letting things happen, letting players kill each other, so I have less people to kill. There is a volley of gunfire, and there goes the fourth player, so I know I have an enemy over there uh, in that direction. Now, I'm not sure where the other player is, so again, just waiting it out, hiding behind this tree. Plenty of time here to play with. I'm trying to see if I can peek some shots. This is a, a very interesting arena, and again, this is randomly generated in terms of where the zone comes to, so the final arena you get staged with uh, is different every time you play the game, which I think is a smart decision. Restricting play area, here we go. Things are going to come down to it, and it's all going to end in the blink of an eye. There's a couple of shots. I'm not sure if he's firing at me. Return fire. Two players left alive, and I see the guy and get the headshot. And winner, winner, chicken dinner, that is the round. Uh, very invigorating, very fun. Um, something that is extremely replayable, and I have to say I'm impressed with the feature set that it's bringing this early in early access. You can check it out on Steam again for all things player, unknowns, battlegrounds. Keep it right here on IGN.